I think even after the Royal Commission and everything that the Salvation Army were asked about and the evidence that they gave that no, children aren't safe in the Salvation Army right at the moment. The Salvation Army has delivered a formal apology to those mistreated in its care. They were meant to protect the most vulnerable children. Instead, they were responsible for some of the most shocking child abuse ever seen in Australia. We are sorry, deeply sorry, for every instance when children were sexually abused by our personnel or while in our care. Are you saying that it's possible that some of the perpetrators have still not been identified? Not that I know of. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, but um, there's no one out there that I'm aware of. Growing up in the army was very, what I'd call, insular. It was, you were pretty much born in to an organisation where you went to school with other officers' kids, you went on the Salvation Army bus to school, you were in playgroup, kindergarten, everything else with other officers' kids. Within ourselves, within our group of our own as well as more broadly, we were known as the OKs. We moved around quite a lot, as Salvation Army officers did a lot back then. Most of the abuse took place either via the Northgate Salvation Army or when I was at the training college in um, Parkville. My abuse started probably from the age of about three or four and it involved five different people over about ten years. You know, these people were the, old, the elders or the older people of the army, very well respected. So it sort of started very young and then continued up through playgroups, youth groups um, within the church itself and then led to abuse within babysitting hours, um, groups that were arranged to sort of look after us little kids, you know, the older kids sort of looking after us little kids. Um, and the abuse really continued for about 10 years. I've had conversations with other officers' children that have brought up the same names of perpetrators. I remember telling an older um, person, so I would have been sort of age 9 or 10 and, and she would have been sort of age 17, 18, and these were sort of the older people who were in charge of us younger kids to sort of look after us in youth groups and youth groups that we had. Um, and I remember telling her and sort of explaining to her I didn't want to go there anymore, I didn't like the person, made me feel uncomfortable. I then explained to her some of the things that he had done and pretty much just sort of got, you know, that's just him, he's sort of funny, he just likes girls, he's just trying to be silly. Um, you know, it's not the first time I've heard this, don't worry about it too much. I'm sure, it, you know, it'll, it, he'll move on and, and it won't be a big deal. Um, and then when I did try and speak about it a few years later, even to my mother, it was very much, you know, no one's really going to believe you because of who they were or who their parents were. You know, some of these people's parents were quite high up in the army. So I was really given the understanding that if I did speak out and I did name these people, that I wouldn't be believed at all. Just the very fact that there is a serving officer still in the army um, that has allegations against him and really the investigation that went on wasn't very detailed. Um, and I do have concerns, having been involved in a couple of cases over the last couple of years, that you know there are still that, that cultural change to happen, that that secrecy, that hidden nature of senior Salvation Army officials and, and officers um, is still going on or having an impact on children within the army. Particularly, um, I think officers' kids, it's very difficult for officers' kids to speak out. Your whole life revolves around who your family is, who, what your name is. To be able to disclose to their families is really, really difficult because you're dealing with people who have devoted their whole life to an organisation, not just from a practical, financial, housing point of view, but from a deeply spiritual, you know, commitment 
to something and for them to even acknowledge that the very children that they brought into this organisation weren't safe and probably still aren't is a really, really difficult thing to bring out.